Well, thanks for coming out. <laughs> I'm, uh, I know you could be watching the presidential debate. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, you can you know, uh, do the art of the <laughs> But anyway, uh, we're going to be richly rewarded tonight. And, uh, and the reason I know that is because uh, the third verse in the first chapter of Revelation promises that to us. It says in the third verse, the first chapter says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are the ones who hear the words of this prophecy and keep what is written in it, because the time is near. I know that I'll be blessed because I fully intend to read this book out loud. <laughs> and it only remains then that we hear and that we keep the words to receive the abundant blessing. And that's God's heart for us. You, you know, did you guys know, one of my favorite sayings that I learned from Jerry Cook was uh, that we serve a predictably good God. And when you let that sink in, you know, we serve a predictably good God. But we know He always has our best in His heart, in his heart all the time. All the time. No matter what. And uh, His blessings on His people. Through his son Jesus, and, and uh, I want to be blessed. <laughs> so, so and some of us, I think, you know, would say, "No, I'd rather be miserable." So people will kind of gather around me, and <laughs> you know, I've, you know, you've you've, you've uh, seen that before. Just kind of misery loves company, that kind of thing. It's, but 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 tonight, we're going to be blessed, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and uh, so that's one of my motivations for getting into this book but the other motivation is my main motivation is it found in the very first opening phrase of the book of revelation and it says it says uh, where am i at oh <laughs> it just everybody knows it says the revelation of jesus christ and that's the way the book opens up. And who here doesn't want to know Jesus or know him better? If you're, if you're not one of those people, I guess we're in the wrong place. Uh, I don't have anything for you. I got, all I can do really is, is what Rory would always say is, is take your hand, or you, that's all we can do is take the hand of someone else and put it in the hand of the Savior. That's all we can really do. And so that's all I really want. And, and you're going to be in safe hands <laughs> In, in Jesus' hands, because you're not going to get COVID from Jesus, <laughs> but you are going to get healing, and you're going to get peace, and you're going to get comfort, and you're going to get love, and there's going to be safety just from the touch of the Savior. So here's what C.H. Spurgeon has to say about the book of Revelation. He wrote, a, he wrote the aim of the book. This is in your notes. Did anybody, if you didn't get notes, there's some there, there's notes and, and outlines and stuff right there on the table there. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Should have checked. <clears throat> so this is in your notes. Uh, here's what C.H. Spurgeon has to say about the book of Revelation. The aim of the book of Revelation is not to lead us into speculation, but is meant to, for practical purposes. Things written concerning the future are not intended to gratify our curiosity as to stimulate our watchfulness. The main objective is to keep us constantly on the lookout. Did you, did you catch all that? You know, he, he, you and I, we, we need to avoid all the speculation when it comes to Revelation. What we need to do is we need to be looking for Jesus. It's definitely a book of prophecy, but that one thing we need to be doing is looking for Jesus. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. And, and I've been live alive long enough that I've seen several people try, try to predict the apocalypse or, or, or who the Antichrist is. You know, he was, he, was, uh, uh, he was Henry Kissinger, he was a Barack Obama, he was, he was uh, Ron Wilson Reagan. You know, he's been a lot of different people. But, but uh, I am not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So the church, or the bride, she should be looking for Jesus Christ, who's the groom. And he's prepared 
He's not preparing, but he's already prepared a place for us. In John 14, he talks about how I go to a place, prepare a place for you. And he's already prepared that. In this study, we're going to be looking kind of at it a lot of time. We're going to be re- reflecting back to the Jewish ceremony of the wedding ceremony and, and the ceremony and, and, and everything about it. Uh, but for now, I just want to, uh, it's not, this had, does, isn't a Jewish wedding, but it's a, what we would call a traditional American wedding. You guys are used to watching those. Uh, I want to talk about our wedding. <laughs> and uh, uh, I just want to, there was one moment in our wedding that I cannot forget. I can't, I, can, I can't hardly remember all the pomp and all the ballyhoo and all that, but there was one moment. And, and uh, it was when the, the bride, Cheryl, came down the aisle and I, the, I first laid eyes on her. And, and if I could sing right now, I'd sing, that magic moment. <laughs> <laughs> It was that, you know, it was like, I, I, time stopped, time, it, everything was, and, 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 and I think that that moment will absolutely pale in comparison to the moment that God says, Jesus, go get your bride, you know, that's going to be so awesome. So we just, he, he's already clothed us in our wedding garments, all we really need to be doing is be filled with the Holy Spirit, be looking for the bridegroom. Have our lamps filled and be looking. So let's get a little background. <clears throat> okay, it's uh, the year 95 A.D. Ten of the uh, first 12 disciples of, of Jesus have been martyred for their faith. Judas, of course, betrayed him and he went and hung himself. And then here's John. This isn't, this isn't in like hanging out at Starbucks and, and you know, opening the Bible and, and just doing some disciple time, you know, just drinking over a cup of coffee. These guys, these guys face some serious persecution. We talk about how the church is persecuted, being persecuted right now. We don't know what that's like. These guys were getting it from, from the Romans, and they were getting it from the Jews. They were really getting it. Um, there's this egomaniac guy, this egomaniac uh, Domitian, and he saw himself as a god. He should be in your chart there, I think. He saw himself as a god. And he was demanding worship. And he was after the last guy. He was after John. And uh, John was the one. He, John was the guy that... I'm going to get a drink. Is this okay? This, is, this hasn't been opened, so I guess it's good. <laughs> I've been sitting here. Uh, John watched. He watched uh, the resurrection of the of a young woman, of a young girl. He was uh, one of the three who witnessed the the uh, transfiguration, and he was one of the, one that was called on to pray at the Garden of Gethsemane, and. Uh, he was the first one to really to witness the empty tomb and kind of size up the situation and let everybody know what was going on. But now here's John. He's been a fa- there's been a failed attempt on his life by Domitian to boil him alive. He's been banished to the godforsaken island of Patmos. And if you go to Patmos today, I, I, I went and did a Google search and it looks pretty cool. And, and the only way you can get there is by a ferry or if you have a private boat or something. You can't, get, you can't fly in. But it's, there's some beaches there and there's, there's several churches. Uh, and and there's, it's really a nice looking island. But I, but I understand that in John's time it, was, it, was, it was, wasn't that way. It was a rocky, barren island. And that was a place where they banished criminal, or, or they, yeah, they, 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 they sent criminals there to be to die, you know. So here's John. All of his buddies been killed, and he's been boiled in, boiled in oil. He's probably still still scarred and still hurts. He's got pain, I'm sure, in his body, and uh, and uh, 
I don't know what he was thinking right then, but I know what I'd be thinking. I'd be thinking, you know, God, I, I, I know that I, there was that time when we all kind of betrayed you at the, at the, uh, at the crucifixion. I, I, you know, I know that, but we, you know, we had some times, and, 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 we, uh, and I've uh, um, we've hung out, and I've been, been faithful to witness for you. I've been faithful to lead your people in church. I've, I've been, you know, I've, I've been all I can do for you. And then and, and, uh, uh, he said, and this is what I get. That's what I'd say. But, but John, he, he just, it just seems like, that's, it just seems like it's, that's how it works, isn't it? It's, uh, it's in those moments when we hear those words, it's cancer, it's cancer. Or, I'm leaving you. Or, there's been an accident. And, and, uh, or maybe your son or your daughter or someone you love has, has decided to, to just leave the faith. Whatever it is, you just fill in the blank. It's those times that if we press into Jesus and we reveal, he, he'll just reveal himself to us in a special way. That's the, that's the time that John... He's at the bottom, you know, and he's getting this revelation. And those are the times when we get a revelation. If you've been there, you know. And I know you, I'm sure you have. That's when the hymns, the great hymns, all the great hymns have been written, is in those times like that. And uh, John finds this cave, and Jesus starts speaking to him, and he says, uh, hey, start riding. I got a message for those seven churches in Turkey, and for all the churches who are going to call on my name. I got a message for them. I want to unveil a mystery to those who long to see me. John, just write what you've seen, the things that are, and what's coming next. And that's the outline that we're going to, that we're going to use here. It's what, seems, what uh, some have called God's divine outline for the book of Revelation. It just simplifies the book and, and helps it all make sense. What you've seen, the Lord's present or Lord's person in chapter one. What is the Lord's people, chapters two and three, and what will take place after this, the Lord's program, chapters four to the end of the book. Okay, so I'm not one to go around uh, sounding the alarms or, or predicting the future or anything like that, but I'll let God's word do that. But the the times that we're living in right now, they just seem to cry out, don't they? they that, that, that the Lord's near? Do they seem to cry out? Does that seem right? Do you agree? As Pastor David would say, do you agree? <laughs> yeah. So I believe that, Jesus, that lately Jesus has brought me to the book that I, like many, have, been, have, have actually just shied away from for whatever reason. Maybe it's, we felt like it was too hard to understand. Maybe we feel like it scares the heck out of us. <laughs> I wrote something else, but I ain't going to say that. <laughs> and and uh, maybe we just have the attitude that maybe it'll just all unfold in due time and we'll understand it then. But about a year and a half ago, May of 2019, the Lord stirred in me a desire to just take a look at the book of Revelation. I just started by taking a verse, or part of a verse, and, and uh, just writing down my thoughts. This is one of the books that I, I wrote. You know, I just write down just whatever comes in my mind. It's just, uh, no matter how silly or how, how weird it is, just write, just wrote it down. Sometimes I wouldn't get anything, and sometimes, every once in a while, if I really quieted my spirit, God would speak to me. He'd speak to me something really personal, really revelatory. I would, I would highly encourage you doing that. Then I'd look up cross references and very, very commentaries, and I just write. I keep on writing. But for this study, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reflect back on my notes here, and I'm gonna bring them under the scrutiny of, of this, <laughs> of God's word. And then I'm also using numerous commentaries by David Gusick, John Corson, C. H. Spurgeon, and many others. But, and Cheryl has been so kind. She. She bought this book right here, and she's been kind enough to let me use it. 
It's, uh, it's, it's Swindoll's Living Insights, and I highly recommend it. it. It really is a good book. If you want to learn about Revelation, it's a good book. Of course, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible itself. But I have to kind of issue a word of caution on the Bible. Not that the Bible, it, there's nothing wrong in it, but, but when, you, when we start following, um, <clears throat> start following references and, and uh, different things, lexicons, whatever we do, sometimes we'll jerk a verse out of context. And I think it's so important to remember context. So that's one thing we want to do is make sure we stay in context of what the Bible's trying to say, what the Word is saying. We need to know, we need to know the situation of when it was written and why it was written and who it was written to, all those things, and we need to apply those things. Uh, but what happens is a lot of times is people jerk a verse out of context, and then you wind up with a cult or a sect, or you wind up with, with some false religion, and it happens a lot. <clears throat> But I want to say that I hold right here in my hand the inerrant Word of God. I trust it with everything. This is an amazing book. It's withstood the test of time and the test of scrutiny. There have been a lot of guys sent out to disprove it. C.S. Lewis, Josh McDowell, Lee Strobel, to name a few. And those guys have become our, some of our greatest apologists now, haven't they? Yeah. 66 books, 40 different authors, over 1,500 years, written on three continents, and amazing, it's without contradiction. Roy used to say whenever he found a seeming contradiction in the Bible, he would always have to believe that both, both points are true. And I think you have to. You have to come to that realization that, that somehow it all works. <sighs> Um, but the main thing is it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, isn't it? I find that sometimes when I read the Bible, it's reading me, but, but it's not about me, it's about Jesus. You know, you take a book, you take Genesis, it's Jesus. Exodus, it's Jesus. Leviticus, it's Jesus. Deuteronomy, <laughs> Psalms, Proverbs, Esther, Ruth, you know, any book in the Bible, you name it, it's about Jesus. That's what this book is about, Jesus. It's about his redeeming love for us. So here's how we're going to do this thing. We're going to have a time of study every week. We're going to try to have a time of study, and then we'll be breaking up into, into groups, hopefully, and, and we'll, we'll share and minister to each other. We, I wrote some questions, and you'll see them in your notes, and we'll... We'll, we'll talk about those. And then we're going to do some prayer in your groups. And then we're going to come back and sing a song. And, uh, and then we're going to leave here equipped <laughs> to go and share the word with a world that desperately needs it. I'm checking my time. Uh, And just be forewarned, we're not going to be in a hurry to get to the trumpets and the bowls and all the plagues and all that stuff. We're going to, we're going to take our time. We're going to move, move at a snail's pace. I, I uh, really like to take my time and look and really want to know what it says. Um, the main thing is all while we're doing it, we're still looking for Jesus, right? He might, he might come before we're done. <laughs> Probably wouldn't surprise me at all. Anyway, if I say the name Emmett Kelly... Anybody? Emmett Kelly? Yeah, <laughs> my wife. He was this years and years and years, before our time actually, but he was a, a, a sad-faced clown. He was like a hobo-looking dude, had all these rags on and stuff, and he was, he's uh, always just sad face and just doing these pantomimes. <laughs> That's how old it was. It, he, it was. There was no sound. He was just did pantomimes. But he had this one pantomime that he liked to do is the spotlight, and he would, uh, the, the, he'd, the spotlight would be shining on him, and he'd go to try to get out of the spotlight, and the spotlight would move. <clears throat> and then he would, 
eventually he'd get out of the spotlight and he'd be doing things, trying to move that spotlight around. And he, could, he finally goes, he gets this sad look. You know, he's, he's thinking, and he picks up the broom and he starts sweeping it around. And, he's, and he still can't seem to control that thing. So finally he's got this idea. He, he picks up a rug and he sweeps the thing under the rug. Spotlight disappears. <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> He just couldn't catch that thing. <clears throat> and I think that's what most of us do. We start chasing the spotlight. We start chasing a new home, a new career, a new spouse, or a new family, or whatever. Something's going to bring us some kind of happiness. But when we finally get it swept up, we just can't keep it. So we just wind up finally just sweeping it under the rug, and we give up on our dreams. And we just... Just give up. Here's what I want to suggest. I want to suggest for us that we change our end game. What if happiness isn't the goal? But rather happiness is just something that happens along the way as we're pursuing a worthwhile goal. So I want to just figure out what is a worthwhile goal. And in order to do that, we're going to skip to the end of the book. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. It says, uh, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. <coughs> And the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his people's. God himself will be with them and be their God. He'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more because the previous things have passed away. And that's our end game, to be with the Lord forever and ever. And for most of us, that's just enough. You know, that's enough. That's good. I know that one day I'm going to be with Jesus, and that's good. But, you know, Jesus is, is, is uh, you guys know the, the, the four square verse. We, I think David's brought it up. Uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the A and the Z. But what about the time in between? What about that time? What about the time we're living in right now? Let's read one more verse. Revelation twenty two seventeen. Both the spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life freely. All of our desires, all of our longings, all of our thirst is satisfied in Jesus. The cry of our hearts must be, come Lord Jesus. And it must also be, come to the Lord Jesus. Right? That's why we're doing this thing. We're coming, we're here to be to become disciples who make disciples. Okay? What we'll do now, I think, is I, I have the questions. We'll just break up. We got what groups of four four to six, six people at the most. Um, and we just have uh, 
discuss those questions and and then pray. And if you uh, and then Marshall's going to come do another song with us, lead us in, in the Lord again. But if you happen to be in the middle of of a prayer, don't stop. I mean, just you know, you can stay here and pray all night if you want to. Just lock the doors when you leave, please. <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty important. That's why we're here. I, I, that's why I want to do this. I don't want to just have information about Revelation. I want us to be changed. And I hope the Word changes us through this book. And I know it will. If we just stay with it. Thank you. That's all I got. <laughs>